Welcome back. I, I This is my fault. So a couple days ago I said in one of my videos that, you know, it's really quiet newsworthy wise that, you know, it's just the playoffs and the news will pick up again once the playoffs are done. Uh, clearly the Toronto Maple Leafs heard that and said we take that personally. Now, a lot of this fallout is from the playoffs, but I've seen people saying, well, you know, they didn't get it done in the playoffs, that's why Dubas is gone. No. Uh, according to Brandon Shanahan, the reasons that Kyle Dubas was let go uh, really stemmed from two things. There was the disagreement over the contract, which I think probably could have got worked out. And I think if that's all it was, Shanahan would have figured out a way to work that out. But it was just the hesitancy. So he was certain that Dubas was his guy, and that was their, their general manager. He had advised Dubas not to do the presser on Monday, which, of course, he did and famously said, you know, basically, yeah, I'll talk to my family. I'll see if I want to stick around. And and that put a little bit of doubt into Shanahan's mind. And then he met with Dubas. He talked to Dubas' agent as well. And just everything all just ended up with him saying, I, I'm going to go in another direction. And so uh, Dubas is out. Uh, so this had nothing to do with losing in the playoffs. This had nothing to do with not getting over the hump, being a regular season team, not a playoff team, all these narratives that are out there. And I understand why those narratives are out there because all we're left with is speculation. But what Shanahan's saying is basically that uh, Dubas hemming and hawing on whether or not he wants to stick around uh, left him thinking, yeah, I, I want somebody who's really committed to the job long term. And also understanding the reasons why Dubas would be a little bit hesitant to stick around. Uh, the concerns about, you know, family and how it affects his family. And I have no doubt that for hockey players and GMs and coaches, I mean, you send your kids off to school, uh, the, there's various, probably bullying would go on this kind of, but at any rate, um, and, and I mean, and I've heard that before, but yeah, just everything added up and, and Shanahan said, all right, so we'll look in another direction. Uh, Dubas has not answered yet, basically, when Reese for Comment said that He'll answer this at another time. Uh, so we'll see what happens. We'll see where they look for a general manager. There's already speculation on whether or not they need somebody who is an experienced general manager in the NHL. I would be kind of surprised if they don't. I'd be kind of surprised if, if they don't look at somebody who's already had this kind of a job. And there might be somebody out of Calgary that might work. Uh, Brad Tree Living. So the Flames, This is a, here's, here's a segue for you. Uh, the Flames have reconsidered. So, of course, it came out this week that uh, Tree Living, Pittsburgh wanted to talk to him, and the Flames said no. Uh, the Flames have reconsidered. They said, no, we'll, we'll let him talk to whoever, uh, and if he wants to, to get a job before June 30th, that's fine with us. So this could open up Brad Tree Living being interviewed for various positions, maybe, possibly, potentially, including Toronto. So throw that out there. Go ahead, throw it out there. Um, but yeah, um, so tree living is out there now. The general manager position for the Flames, they want to get that done. Apparently they're in the final stages of deciding who's going to be the, the general manager. It does appear Craig Conroy is the odds-on favorite to get the job. But when you look at who got interviewed last week, uh, it includes Dave Nonis, who I, I think was a better GM than given credit for in the times he's been a general manager. I understand why he doesn't have a general manager job right now, but I think he can be a good general manager. At any rate, Stan Bowman interviewed, which has got some eyebrows raised. Mine too. I I don't know that I would I would be hiring Bowman if I had an opportunity to hire a general manager for whatever. I don't really have anything, but if if I did, I don't know that Bowman would be on my list. And Mark Bergevin, and of course. In the event that Mark Bergevin was to get a general manager job in Calgary, the memes kind of write themselves um, because there's a lot that are just built in with bringing in Bergevin. But again, Conroy is the odds on favorite. That's probably where they're going to go. Uh, Frank Saravelli reporting that those other three have had interviews with the Calgary Flames and are considered to be part of you know the finalists. Honestly, if Nonis was an assistant general manager, that might make some sense. Coming back to Toronto, an assistant, special assistant to the general manager, Jason Spatza, whose job was basically to be an assistant to Kyle Dubas, has left the organization. So, I mean, and it makes sense. For Spatza, the job he had kind of no longer exists. And so he's he's uh, he's out of the Toronto Maple Leafs organization. So there's definitely some upheaval in Canada, but it's not just in Canada. 
Arizona. So uh, Logan Cooley has decided to stay in the NCAA. He'll play for for Minnesota uh, for another year, his sophomore year. Normally that wouldn't be big news, but of course with what's going on in Arizona, could there be a point where they have a hard time signing their top top draft picks, right? So that's something to keep an eye on because we don't know what's going to happen with Arizona, which then segues into the next item on the board, which is Connecticut. So I've seen people saying, hey, what about the Whalers? Uh, the governor agrees with you. Connecticut's governor. And I always, always forget the C in Connecticut because there's three C's in it. That second one is silent and it just throws me off every time because every time I write it down, I'm like, so it's Connecticut? Weird. It just, it does not look right. It doesn't sound, sound the way it looks. Anyways, Connecticut governor uh, wants to bring back the Whalers. He has requested a meeting with Gary Bettman. I'm thinking this is going nowhere. I, I don't know if Bettman's going to meet with him or not, but he wants to meet with Bettman in the next week about the Coyotes and the opportunity to maybe move the team. Uh, I haven't heard that Hartford has an arena that would support the National Hockey League at this point. Um, I would have thought that if, if Hartford had built an NHL-ready arena to replace the one in the mall they had when they last had the Hartford Whalers, I, I would think that I would have heard a lot about it. But at any rate... Um, we'll see where this goes, if anywhere. I'm guessing no. Uh, the fact that the Coyotes came out with a statement that they plan to stick around in Minnesota, that's going to be the official the official uh, standpoint for the National Hockey League uh, because you don't want to be you know, in a position where it's a lame duck franchise and you're, you're admitting it. So if you, you want to be negative about this, you could say, well, yeah, of course they're going to say that, but privately. And so that's kind of where we're at. So we'll see whether if Bettman takes this meeting with the Connecticut governor, uh, that that could really open some eyes, uh, and now that the governor's gone out there publicly to say it, we'd kind of have to know if that meeting took place, wouldn't we? Uh, so the senators, the reason I'm wearing Ottawa, this this ownership thing just gets weirder. The bids are in, and yet uh, Canadian superstar sprinter Donovan Bailey, one of the more popular Olympic athletes over the last, I'll say, 30 years, uh, joins the Nico Sparks uh, bid for the Sens. The Nico Sparks bid is seen as, from what I've seen, it looks like that's probably the one that's least likely to win the bid. But, I mean, Snoop's on that bid, and now you've got Donovan Bailey. I mean, just for the star power alone, I, I, I don't know that it's going to go anywhere, but it, it's nice to see Donovan Bailey involved. Again, really nice guy. Um, was was an absolute legend at the Olympics for, for Canada. So it would be interesting to see him in an ownership position. But we'll know probably over the next week or two what's going to happen with the Sens and their ownership. And it is interesting because you've got some franchises in flux. You've got Toronto and everything going on there, which includes down here, where you've got the Marlies coaching staff. That's out. So their coaching staff, the head coach and the assistants. So it is, it is a red wedding for the Toronto Maple Leafs organization today. Uh, you've got the Sens. They need a new building and a new owner. Hartford wants back in. The Coyotes are looking for a place to stay. Oh, in Calgary, uh, there's the there's the vote for the Alberta uh, governor or governor Al Alberta government, and if that was to go against the UCP, there's the possibility that the Saddle Dome funding or the Saddle Dome replacement funding coming from the provincial government could be in danger. But at any rate, it is an interesting time right now for the National Hockey League. Remember, there are 32 stable franchises. That's what Gary tells us. And so Gary's got to be right because how could he possibly be wrong? Anyways, uh, let me know your thoughts. I know there's going to be people excited to see a Whalers logo on the board. I've now had Thrashers, Nordiques, and Whalers on the board over the last week. This is truly a bizarre time we're living in, but I'm here for it. Honestly, if the NHL came out tomorrow and said, you know what? We're going we're gonna to expand in four cities. We're going to bring in Quebec. We're going to bring in Hartford. We're going to bring in Cleveland, and Atlanta gets their third shot. I, I'd be like, go for it. Cool, great, because, I mean, I already have all the magnets. I already have all the jerseys. I'm set. So we'll see, and I would love to see Cleveland jerseys back. So that's, that's my vote. Anyways, but we'll see what happens. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Uh, I would imagine that between now and the end of the Dallas-Vegas game, Something's going to happen with Toronto. Um, maybe new ownership. I, why not, right? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Imagine Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment not owning the Maple Leafs. That'd be odd. But anyway, any rate, uh, let me know your thoughts. This is kind of a crazy time, apparently. And, and thanks, Toronto, for giving us something to talk about. 
Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. And so one question I have for Toronto fans. Do you trust in the Shanna plan still? Or do you kind of understand with Dubas and wish that they'd given Dubas more of a chance? Because again, Dubas did say, I, I want to stick around. And then by at that point, Shanahan was like, yeah, no, nah, this is done. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.